Cormac McCarthy's Blood Meridian, published in 1985, is often regarded as one of the darkest and most profound novels in American literature, set in the violent and desolate landscapes of the U.S.-Mexico borderlands in the mid-19th century, it follows a nameless protagonist known only as The Kid, who joins a group of scalp hunters led by the enigmatic and terrifying figure Judge Holden. The novel is unflinching in its exploration of brutality, with Holden embodying a force that is both mesmerizing and nightmarish. Judge Holden is not simply a villain. He is a manifestation of chaos and violence, a towering nearly mythical figure with pale skin, an imposing bald head, and a mysterious background. Described as a man who seems to know everything and possess unfathomable strength, Holden is a contradiction, charismatic, learned, yet monstrous. He is often portrayed as a judge in name only, passing judgment not with mercy, but through violent action and a complete disregard for human life. His philosophy that war is God becomes a chilling refrain throughout the novel as he reveals his twisted beliefs about fate, dominance, and power. This character's mysterious nature has captivated readers and critics alike, leading some to interpret him as an almost supernatural figure, an avatar of death, a devil in human form, or a dark mirror reflecting humanity's capacity for evil. Judge Holden's inscrutability and his relentless cruelty leave an indelible impression on readers, much as he does on those who encounter him within the story. In modern times, Though Judge Holden remains a fictional creation, his figure has become a symbol for an unsettling kind of power, one that transcends time and space. But what if this mythical presence wasn't confined to the pages of a novel? What if, in the year 2019, a man stumbled upon a figure eerily reminiscent of McCarthy's haunting judge, 14 feet tall with pale skin and a similarly imposing presence? This encounter raises questions about myth, reality, and the boundaries between them, pulling us into an extraordinary story that blurs the lines between the literary and the real. This is his story. This is my story. What I'm about to share can't be proven, and I don't expect anyone to believe me, let alone to share this and warn others. Something dark and terrible is coming. Something that will change everything for the worse eventually leading to a nuclear war that could plunge us into another ice age. This is the same story I've been telling since 2019, yet no one believes it happened to me. People talk about encounters with strange beings on TV, but my story is yet to be heard on a bigger platform. Maybe I should have written a book, reaching those who don't get all their news from a platform, owned by what I believe to be the very white-skinned demon, whom I see as the Archangel of Death, Wrath, and War, Azazel, the original serpent in the garden, better known as Cain, the first murderer. Years ago, a follower of this white-skinned figure approached me and said, they won't believe you until it's too late. Because, you see, this giant, the one who inspired the character of Judge Holden, is real. To secret societies around the world, he's their god. An ancient force that has survived through the ages, accumulating wealth and influence until finally through CERN, he captured God in an endless time loop. The so-called God particle CERN seeks is part of a far deeper agenda, a hidden plan to prevent divine intervention and ensure this engineered nuclear disaster unfolds. A plan that may have been centuries in the making. If CERN isn't stopped, the world is doomed. If people believed my story, or if I had the resources, I would make sure CERN was disabled by any means necessary. Somehow, they knew I would try to fight back, and they broke me because of it. My life has been upended repeatedly by those who'd silenced me. Microsoft sued me for $33 million, bankrupting my online marketing business. 
Just as I was recovering financially, a package of heroin arrived at my doorstep, sending me to prison for three years on felony charges. I went from making $50 an hour in corporate roles to barely surviving on $10 an hour, unable to get hired due to the accusations leveled against me. This cult targeted me, knowing I could uncover their plan for global destruction, and maybe even stop it, if I had help. But no one believes me, and many seem indifferent, worn down by a life of toxins, stress, and despair. And then there are those who know I'm telling the truth, but support this new world order vision. Convinced they'll be kings in this new world. To those followers. Do you really think the ones orchestrating this destruction will spare you? You'll end up in the same mass grave as the rest of us. When the dust settles after the nuclear war, what good will your wealth be? There won't be shopping malls or deliveries in a post-apocalyptic wasteland. You have sacrificed your souls and won't even get what you were promised in the end. So, once more, I'll recount the events that brought me here. Starting with the encounter that changed everything. The day I met the 14-foot, white-skinned, giant, this angel of wrath. Wrath. In 2019, I was living in Erie, PA, working as a plumber's assistant while finishing my college degree. After I was fired from my job, I had a lot of time on my hands which I spent trying to understand what had happened to a young runaway girl I used to see at McDonald's. She panhandled there, and I'd often buy her coffee or give her a few dollars. One day, I learned she'd been kidnapped, brutally gang-raped, and killed in an abandoned power plant. Despite the horror of her murder, the police seemed strangely uninterested, even secretive. I couldn't let it go. I wanted to know why this tragedy was buried in silence. So, I started asking around, among the homeless community, trying to find out what happened. One of them, who squatted in the power plant, told me the girl was sacrificed to summon a demon. I thanked him, but I assumed he was just strung out. Still, I kept asking questions around town. Soon local cops began warning me to back off, telling me I didn't want to know. That only made me dig deeper. I went to the site and found a pit where her body had been tossed, circled by occult symbols that looked eerily familiar. I'd read some black magic books as a teenager and recognized a few. After researching the symbols online, I paid an occult investigator to identify them. He said they were related to summoning a demon named Azazel. And a few days later, I met a woman who claimed to be a real witch. She stayed at my place, and somehow, by the next morning, all the photos I'd taken were erased from my laptop. When I returned to the power plant to retake them, someone had scrubbed the symbols away. I was frustrated, but felt compelled to make a strange declaration, almost like I was possessed. In two weeks time, I will see the enemy of mankind in this very spot. I didn't know why I'd said it. My friend looked at me like I'd lost my mind. Two weeks later on March 9th, 2019, I was walking home from dinner at Tim Hortons around 9 p.m. when I noticed a figure up ahead waving at me. I thought he was calling my name, but as I got closer, he vanished. No. I approached where he'd been standing and found a wooden cross driven into the ground with an occult robe draped over it. Suddenly, something that looked like a floating eye, almost like the eye of Sauron, appeared above me 
hovering in the air. Unsure if it was a drone or some other tech, I walked towards the power plant where the girl had died. Then, a massive, glowing pink sphere rose from the pit. It looked like neon light trapped in a perfect bubble, the size of a pickup truck. Yet the light didn't illuminate anything outside itself. I kept walking, more intrigued than afraid. When I suddenly saw an enormous set of ancient scales materialize in front of me, alongside what looked like a small, floating robot. The scales communicated with me telepathically. Fear not, we are watchers. I am Raguel. This is my attendant, Sariel. I stood frozen, staring at these surreal figures, feeling the weight of their presence, as if I were truly in the presence of ancient beings. Then, a low-flying aircraft circled above, casting a spotlight on me. Panicking, I turned to run. But at that moment, the Book of Enoch began playing from my backpack, repeating the line, Ascribe all sin to Azazel. Suddenly, I was face to face with a towering, white-skinned giant, nearly 14 feet tall. He was horrifyingly familiar, a dead ringer for Judge Holden from Blood Meridian. The sight of him filled me with a primal terror. This wasn't just some vision from Cormac McCarthy's novel. This was real, standing right in front of me. McCarthy must have glimpsed the same entity, somehow, to have written such an accurate likeness of this towering white devil, a being whose nature was as malevolent as the one described in the book. He was naked as a stone, but for a pair of boots and a tall hat, and he was lean, wiry, all sinew and bone, without a single ounce of excess flesh on him. His hands were large and white, he spoke with a strangely childlike authority, his voice as old as the stones, as dry and powerful as the desert wind. With Judge Holden's terrifyingly cold demeanor in mind, I realized McCarthy hadn't invented a character, but it channeled something real and horrifying. The giant spoke to me telepathically. I am the enemy of mankind. Soon I will start a nuclear war that will destroy your civilization. No one will believe you until it is far too late. I am Azazel. Shaking, I reached for a switchblade in my pocket, but it disassembled in my hand, falling apart as if some invisible force had dismantled it. I ran, eventually emerging from a series of tunnels into a Pentecostal church. Inside, worshippers rolled on the ground, speaking in tongues. When they saw me, they surrounded me, laying hands on me, chanting in a language I didn't understand. Just then, the police arrived. One of the officers greeted me by name, as if he'd known I'd be there. Without explanation, they arrested me, taking me to St. Vincent's Hospital, where they placed me in a hidden ward. There, I was forced to watch a homeless man be castrated, while police officers danced around, mocking me. They were even joking about Kennedy having been assassinated by them as a human sacrifice to Lucifer, their false god. One officer sneered, We control your world! As they all laughed, a moment that felt like a twisted scene from They Live. I left jail almost a year later, stripped of everything I owned. Since that night, I've received threats and been followed by strangers. It feels like I uncovered something I was never supposed to see. A glimpse of evil so profound that I'll never be able to return to a normal life. My own father told me that I am a dead man walking. My own mother told me we deliberately have ruined your life. My best friend told me you are destined to be raped by Satan and laughed maniacally. I don't understand what is happening, but I know that if people do not wake up and listen to what I am saying, there is going to be a nuclear war. That is the goal of Mystery Babylon, to destroy human civilization, because all that ancient alien stuff is real. 
But they aren't from another planet. They are from heaven. You see, Judge Holden, the character from Blood, Meridian, that guy was based on a fallen angel. And they have always controlled our world. And every few hundred or thousand years, when people start getting wise to their lies, they do a great reset and destroy the world, sending mankind back to the Dark Ages for another thousand years. If you believed any of this, you need to start warning people about what is coming. We still have a chance to stop it if we can rally enough support to destroy the CERN Particle Accelerator. But the chances of that happening are near zero, because no one even cares anymore. Most people are asleep, even when they are awake. Just programmed automatons going through the daily motions of living, but not truly alive. They are human doings, not human beings. They are zombies. Just Babylon Bees. If you are a human being and not a Babylon Bee, please share this video and warn your friends and family about what is happening. We need to be ready, because this is about to begin. With Trump in office, it is only a matter of time before he reveals his true agenda, and Christians begin being sent to FEMA camps to be executed for worshipping the true God and Christ. Trump is not a Christian, no matter what you believe. His own autobiography, he says he has studied Kabbalah since childhood. Kabbalah is black magic. It's the magic that the fallen angels taught to the descendants of Cain. And it is utterly real and utterly horrifying. Black magic is firmly rooted in cannibalism and pedophilia. This is where adrenochrome comes from. The torture of little kids and cultists eating their flesh and drinking their blood after it has been filled with strange, secret chemicals secreted by the pineal gland at the point of death. It forces open the third eye and allows the occultist to influence reality while in a heightened state of perception. Believe it or not, our world is ruled by a cult of baby-eating cannibals and they are about to take it all for themselves and send you and your loved ones to a death camp to be sacrificed to a Zazel. It's real, it's happening, and I am a dead man for trying to warn you. My name is Jason Cataldo. I died trying to save a world that rejected me. I am the fool. Next comes the sage.